Hello, welcome back for week three of um, the Advent devotional series um, that I started two weeks ago through um, an invitation from Now She Rises, um, an organization that um, empowers and equips and unleashes women um, to do the work in the church. Um, so I encourage you to check them out. Um, and then you can also get week one and week two um, if you miss them on my YouTube channel or in my Instagram feed. Um, so week three of Advent focuses on um, joy. That is the theme of week three in Advent. And I, when I realized that, that I was going to have to talk about joy in a year that's been so full of grief and sadness and confusion and anger and chaos, um, I wondered what I would, how I could talk about that. Um, and so I was just reading again through the nativity stories, um, one in, in Matthew chapter one and two, and in the other in Luke chapters one and two. And I came across a couple of different texts. They don't match each other timeline wise, but, um, but they capture kind of uh, what I want to encourage us with. The first one in Matthew chapter two. So, um, what has happened is the wise men from the east have come and have gone to Herod saying, where is this child who has been born, the king of the Jews? Um, and because of Herod's jealousy, he then um, inaugurates the massacre of the innocents. He has his guards kill every baby boy under the age of two. Um, and then Matthew's quick commentary um, on that says, Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. Um, and so that idea of refusal to be comforted honestly resonates with me very much this year. Um, the idea of celebration, the idea of joy, even at Christmas, um, feels like a bit of a betrayal to the things that I've lost, to the grief that I've experienced this year and that is ongoing, um, to the suffering of myself and so many that I love and so many that I have never met, just a global suffering. Um, and so I, I just appreciated this text so much that Rachel weeps for her children refusing to be comforted because they're dead. There's a reality that's, that's bigger than um, a trite saying or a platitude and that, that requires a somberness, that requires something um, so powerful that it can penetrate even death. And so... Um, so maybe that's you this year, that feeling that so much has died. So a loved one, a dream, a marriage, um, God forbid, a child, a uh, any any kind of loss um, or death. You're maybe a community um, that has just ended up going by the wayside because um, because of inability to gather. Whatever it is, whatever it is. Um, this next part, I think, is particularly potent. Uh, so the other part I was, I was reading in Luke chapter 2, after Jesus is born, and, uh, and suddenly an angel of the Lord appears to the shepherds. And it says, The radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Um, and so I, I read that, and I, when I saw, it, we, we have um, heard the text, I think, in uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> we have heard it so often. I bring you glad tidings of great joy. The word that's used in the Greek there is the same word used for gospel. It's euangelion, the, I bring you not just good news, the good news that Jesus has come. Um, and so 
that is potent enough. That can comfort. Jesus coming, Jesus um, being the fulfillment of a promise made by God so long ago um, that he came the first time and that he'll come again and make everything right. That is the good news and that is strong enough to penetrate even the darkest darkness. Um, and so I, I just want to leave you with uh, a benediction, a bit of a blessing that I wrote. Um, for those of us who find themselves resonating with the first part of this um, and maybe needing needing to receive the second part. So um, I just ask that you would sit back, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. I honor your weeping, the refusal to be comforted because of what has died, a loved one, a dream, a relationship, your hope, your happiness, your peace, your community and sense of connected belonging. I join with our mother, Rachel, and with you, my sister, to weep for what has been lost. In this darkness, I bear witness to your need for light, to my need for light. I also bear glad tidings. I bear the good news of Jesus Christ who brings great joy to all people, the one our spiritual ancestors waited for as they sat in the tension between prophecy and promises kept. This Jesus, our deliverer, is born. Redemption and restoration have begun. Resurrection now has the last word, not death and not disease. The oil of joy in place of mourning will anoint your head, child of God. Your ashes, your broken heart, your grief will be made beautiful in their time. Yes, I declare to you good news, the good news of great joy for all people. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for you. Yes, you, you are the beloved of God in whose image you are made. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Your inheritance is the companionship of God for all time. The birth of Emmanuel declares to each of us, despite the distancing and the isolation of this year, you are not alone. Behold, the Virgin has given birth to a son. They have called his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. <laughs>